What up? Welcome to episode eight of the Worship Online podcast. We're hanging out with Max Corwin. It's going to be awesome. Before we get rolling, be sure to subscribe, worshipunline.com slash podcast. And we're giving away an annual subscription, so check it out. All right, here we go. Roll intro. Here we are! <laughs> it's episode eight! I'm so pumped about this episode. This is going to be so great. You guys are like, why are you yelling? <laughs> you went all in on that intro. Guys, we've been so quiet it's talking in, deep for like hours. And I'm it's like inspiring ready to, to me. I want to party. start getting up and being more active. <laughs> Let's do this. Woo! Max, you awake? I'm awake. <sighs> you are now. Yep. Today we go. have Max... Corwin, the one and only. Yes, oh, the legend himself. The legend. Stop, um, bro. Our newest team member with yeah. Worship Online. I actually just oh, yeah. realized that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, newest team member. You've probably seen his face pop up on some Worship Online tutorials and even on the Instagram stories. So, yeah. And we haven't yet given you an introduction. Oh. So why don't you tell the people, tell them about yourself. <laughs> Where are you from? Oh. Did you get started? All right. Wow. Well, <laughs> no pressure. What are you doing now? You know. Yeah, totally. Um, well, I've lived in Nashville about nine years now. Um, I'm originally from Texas. Moved here to go to school at Belmont. Um, had never been to Nashville before except for one time visiting the school. And was just th- I just thought it was a good idea <laughs> to come here. Yeah, like, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Didn't really know like what the future held or anything. Had no like mm-hmm. big plan. Just wanted to go to school and um, yeah, I did that um, 2008. And then um, once I got here, I was like, man, Nashville is amazing. Like I yeah. love it here. Um, and growing up in Dallas, like I I got into music pretty late. And in Dallas, there's not a huge like music scene, so I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know like you could do music for a living. I didn't mm-hmm. know a lot of musicians or anything. Mm-hmm. So when I moved here, it was like all my friends just knew so much and like mm-hmm. knew so much about music and recording and um, like good bands and artists and stuff. Like I didn't, I don't think I listened to like a Ryan Adams album until I was like probably. <laughs> 20 years old mm. and yeah. I had no idea who that was like <laughs> just like so, I learned so much when mm. I got here it was like it was incredible um, and just so many talented friends who were just always creating and like inspired me a ton so once I experienced that I was like oh yeah I think I'm gonna stay here for a while and so I finished school and um, just started um, you know doing music and um, playing guitar producing worked for um, a bunch of producers for many years. And um, and then that's just kind of what I do now is um, producing, writing, and um, and playing guitar. Nice. So It's great, man. Yeah. Who are, who are you playing with now? Um, yeah, so right now um, I've been playing with Lauren Daigle. Um, started playing with her um, about a, a little over a year ago, like a year and a half. Um, and I've known her for a long time probably four or five years um, since she moved here and um, we've been friends and about a year and a half ago she was like hey I want you to you know come play guitar for me and I was like you are the best <laughs> like of course awesome. so yeah I've been mostly like traveling with her mm-hmm. doing tours with her and stuff so awesome nice awesome. yeah it's been amazing talk about like your tell us about like the road because I know yeah, a lot yeah. of people wanted to hear that like the road to, from maybe just like serving in your church mm. and like how you grew up playing guitar or whatever and yeah. to like to the point where you became for lack of a better word professional yeah, music, totally. you know what I mean yeah well like I said like I didn't really grow up um, like no, nobody in my family is like you know super musical um, I had always played sports and in high school I went through um, over the course of three years I went through three knee surgeries mm. and so um due to injuries. And so during those times I, you know, couldn't do anything. So I would just play music Hmm. and I didn't, you know, have a ton of friends that did music. So it was just kind of this thing that Mm -hmm. like I did on my own. And then one of the worship leaders in, um, in my youth group was like, Hey, do you want to start, you know, playing, getting involved? 
And I was like, yes, like I've been practicing guitar all the yeah. time. Like I want to do it. And he's like, great. Well, we don't have a bass player. So will you play bass? And I was like, sure. <laughs> and it was just like, I, I was just, music was so new to me. And I was just so mm. like everything, every yeah. little thing was just like magic mm, to me, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And so even just being able to play bass with like other musicians was like amazing. So they had a bass at the church. So I just grabbed it and would practice all the time and played bass and then the guitar player graduated so they were like <laughs> all right you can play guitar now and so that was that was like the last two or three years of um, high school so when I moved to Nashville I w- had not been playing music for very long um, I had had a guitar since I was about 13 or 14 but really only played mm-hmm. you know for probably three maybe four years um, at church and stuff but that I mean that was where I like learned to play with a band and Mm. would just show up every Sunday and like whatever I could do to help would, I mean, that's kind of what I would do. And so when I moved to Nashville, I I wasn't like this amazing musician who was like, here I am, like I'm ready to, (laughs) you know, um, like take over the world, like nothing like that. I just, I was still in this place of like everything I heard was just like inspiring and Mm. I just wanted to do whatever I could to be a part of like you know, this music community. Um, but it was all, it, it, I never thought like, I'm some amazing musician and this is like what I'm going to do. And I like coming from Dallas, I had no concept of like professional musician. Like yeah. I didn't know anybody who did that. And mm-hmm. so it was w- when I moved here that I finally started to see like, oh, people actually do this for a living. Um, and one of the main like the first like turning points for me was um, a friend of mine was making his band was making an album with a great producer in town named Paul Moak. And he was like, Hey, you got to come see this guy's studio. And so I went in and when I walked in to his studio, it was like instant. I was like, this is what I want to do. Like Mm. game over. This is, you know? And so I, I would, I came back day after day for a couple, couple weeks while they were making the album and at the end of it, I just, you know, went up to him and uh, I was like, hey, man, you know, I'm Max. I've been, I've been around. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good, to, like, good to see you. And thanks for coming and hanging out. And I was just like, if you need anybody to, like, clean your bathroom or do anything, like, <laughs> yeah. I just want, I have to be, like, around this place, yeah. like, watching you make records. Mm, and he was like, actually, like, I have an intern that's about to leave. Do you want to, you know, intern here? Mm. And so that kind of led me on a journey of mm-hmm. like, you know, I would do anything from clean the bathroom, make coffee, like whatever. But it kind of started me down this journey of learning about what making, you know, albums looked like mm-hmm. and learned so much from him and met other producers there at his studio that I ended up working mm-hmm. for um, and learning so much for. But it, it, again, it just started from this place of like, whatever you need me to do mm-hmm. i just want to be around this and yeah. like and help and by no means like am i the most t- talented yeah. you know person in nashville not mm-hmm. even close but like i was just there i was just willing to like whatever you need me to do mm-hmm. and yeah um that was a big turning that's point good. for me mm-hmm. that's so cool man yeah i um I'd love for you to maybe expound a little bit on even the belonging, because I know that you yeah. were a part of that um, from the beginning. Mm-hmm. One of the founding, you know, guys <laughs> started like oh, hanging man. out, yeah. going oh, into it. Um, but that whole process, and yeah. then obviously playing in the worship team and yeah. how that's kind of developed. But that ha- that plays yeah. a huge part in your experience here in Nashville too. Totally, hundred percent. That was like, if walking into that first studio was like the first turning point. Hmm. Um, in my journey, the second massive turning point would be when I met Henry, um, and when they had just moved here, and we started doing, you know, what ended up becoming the Belonging, becoming mm-hmm. church. Henry is the just for our listeners. Henry is oh, yeah. the pastor at the Belonging. Co- yeah, Henry and Alex Seeley, lead pastors at the Belonging, amazing people, mm. um, like just <laughs> best friends. They're. <laughs> legends um but yeah i had met henry and he was like hey let's have some people over on a tuesday night just because like i know you guys travel a ton and um we had worship 
I mean, he was just like playing his grand piano mm -hmm. and we were just sitting around singing like songs I think I have sung like a million times. Mm -hmm. But that night we sang and it literally changed my life. Like something happened um, just like in the room and the presence of God was like more than I, it, it was it was more than I had ever experienced mm -hmm. before. Um, and so, you know, we ended the night and we were all like, we got to do this again, like <laughs> yeah. next week, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but it's so cool. It was really cool for me to watch like that first night, Henry's like playing piano and it's just him. There's no worship mm -hmm. team. Mm -hmm. There's no stage. There's no mm -hmm. planning center. There's no nothing. Yeah. And to look now to where there's this team of people that so deeply care about one another mm -hmm. um, and encouraging one another and supporting one another. Um, and watching that happen has been so amazing. But one of the main things that I think brought that about was like just watching Henry serve each single person that like walked into their house, like mm -hmm. to, you know, take interest in them, to like care about them. Um, and then when it came time where we left their house and started doing um, church at an actual venue where we could have like a sound system and um, a couple of the people that had, you know, come and gotten their lives changed by God. And Henry had like cared about and Alex had cared about so much when they said, hey, can you, you know, play at church? Anybody would have said yes, like 100%, mm. whatever you need me to do, I'll do yeah. it. Um, and just, I think watching, watch Henry, Henry, like, is the best musician, like on our whole worship team. <laughs> yeah. But he's also the guy that's like, hey, why don't you lead this song tonight? Why don't you do this? Like, you know, mm. and always telling other people like, oh, dude, your tone was so good tonight. Like yeah. you, mm. like you smashed that, um, that chorus, like mm. all the, all these different things where he's all, always like pouring at other people. Mm -hmm. And um, I think in a city like Nashville, where there's a lot of um, creatives and like a lot of insecurity, mm. he was such a secure force behind like mm. creating a community where you lift up other people. Mm. And but that came from like a very secure place. Like mm. he wasn't. He's such a secure leader, and um, that that trickles down to like the people on the worship team. And so now you have. Um, keys players who are telling everybody like, oh, mm. you're smashing it, you're doing so good, or like, yeah. hey, what was that? It sounded amazing. Like, mm. all these people, they don't they don't need to be mm. told like, hey, you did a good job. They're telling everybody else, like, yeah. you did a, such a good job. Yes. It's such a, it's a community of encouragement. It is, yeah, and it's, I mean. And it really does, it started with Henry. I mean, it started, like, yeah. and I, I love that mindset, and for, I love that we're talking to a worship community too. We're talking yeah. to people who are in churches all over. I think it's so important to understand the role of your of your lead pastor too in all totally. of that. He's the guy on the front row, like encouraging the guys, you know, mm -hmm. who are leading worship when he's yeah. not leading worship. He's yeah, standing, totally. he's standing up and like saying amen to yeah. the preachers, you know, like he's so engaged in what's happening. At the same time, he's so encouraging, and I think that that's that's huge, yeah. and that replicates. But it starts with that secure place yep. that all of us really mm -hmm. have to be in, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And yeah. it's not about how well that I do, but it's it's like how can I encourage the other people that are there. You yeah. Know? yeah, and not being this like, here's how I do things, here's how we're gonna mm. do it, um, but you know, inviting people in to be a part of it. Like, wow, hey, this yeah. is mm -hmm. this is our goal, this is what we want to accomplish. Like help us help us get there. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, he like let people, you know, be themselves, like play the things that they play and, you know, give them freedom, but also like call them higher mm -hmm. into like, hey, what's the what's the point of us like all coming and playing this? It's actually to serve the church and to create an atmosphere for worship. It's not so you can have your yeah. your moment of mm -hmm. everybody look at me or anything mm -hmm. like that. You know, yeah. it's like yeah. that's one of the things I I really have learned from um, Henry and other people at our church of like, you know, we have such a responsibility to create this environment of, of worship um, and that camaraderie, that caring about each other it really does like affect, you know, the unity and I think the worship that happens at our church. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. um, it's a big part of why I think God 
is able to move so much is because mm-hmm. our team is like, I mean, we are, you know, backstage before we go and everybody's like, same page. Mm-hmm. Not like, no doubt in my mind, everybody's like, same goal, same page. And yeah. that's, I think that's a huge mm-hmm. part of um, what happens at our church, but it's because of that intentional leadership of like yeah. bringing people in, inviting them in. Like Henry wouldn't just like have somebody play on the worship team and then, you know, not talk to them ever. Yeah. It's like yeah. he would have them on the worship team and like they were getting coffee. They were like, you know, hanging out. He'd be texting them when they're on the road. Like, dude, how are you doing? <laughs> like, hope you're killing it out on the road. Like, that's a, huge. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. it's just inviting people in and like letting them be a part of what is happening was that's one such of, like, a big deal. That's one of the biggest things I noticed about the belonging code. It's like, so many churches and worship teams, they bring in like someone who maybe is amazing, amazing worship leader, and you assume that that person doesn't need discipleship because they're already on this level. Or like, totally. like you're Lauren Daigle's guitar player, like you don't need discipleship. You know what I mean? Like, or you're yeah. this person, and and you know a lot of you don't just people don't just stop needing discipleship. There's always that, yeah. and I love that about the belonging. How. Um, that's how they've been able to grow such a healthy team is that even when you come into the team, it doesn't matter where you're at or what level yeah. you're doing whatever on. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. Everyone needs that discipleship. Everyone needs that encouragement to grow up. And I think that's why the belonging has attracted so many like people that are doing things in such a high level yeah. is because they're getting that discipleship and that encouragement that they probably feel like maybe they weren't getting in other places. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of, a lot of those people... Um, you know, like, you know, a lot of my friends, they're, they're going on the road and they're, they're pouring out so much and like, yeah. they're giving night after night after night and to be able to come home and have a community mm-hmm. that's just like, as soon as you walk in the door, like, oh my gosh, I missed you so much. Like, it's so good to see you. Like, how was it? We've been praying for you. Mm-hmm. Or even yeah. just like getting emails from people when you're on the road of like, you know, we're praying for you. We're believing for this, 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 and this. Yeah. And like, I mean, that puts so much gas in your tank, especially for these people who are, they do have this call in their life to go out um, into other cities and to like, and to pour out, like filling them up, I think has just taken what they do Mm -hmm. to another like level of um, inspiration and effectiveness. And, um, Mm -hmm. but that's like, I mean, that's a huge role of the local church anyways, you know? So it's amazing to see it. Yeah. I think it's, it's, one of the things that kind of attracted me when we first started coming was mm. that they weren't trying to build an empire. Yeah. They were trying to build the kingdom. And what that means is getting behind the people that are there yeah. and mm-hmm. encouraging them and pushing them forward. And, you know, I think that there's – that's a mindset thing. It's mm. It takes a secure person to say that, you mm-hmm. know. And to to it's not about what we're trying to build. It's about mm-hmm. what God's building yeah. and yeah. the people he's bringing along and, and how important that is and how important they are. And, um, you know, to see how that's become really a foundation for for so many who are leaders, mm-hmm. really, people that are out on the forefront, but to have that community and appreciation and, and really, I mean, yeah. unintended belonging yeah. um, at the church, you know, um, even when they're out and about, mm-hmm. you know, to be poured into even when it's not in the yeah. belonging yeah. thing, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And I think that that's what's so exciting to see. And uh, the foundation, too, and we're talking worship here and yeah. we're family yeah. here, but I think what what really is important is is really the, the mindset of, you know, presence over production. You know, we talk about that. Totally. Um, encounter over entertainment. Those are things yeah. that we say in our church a lot to mm-hmm. rem- really keep us in focus and remind us that it's that's the that's the goal. Yeah. It's the presence of God. It's the power of God. The moment it becomes about the music, mm-hmm. the moment it becomes about the preaching, those are good and those are tools. Yeah. The moment it becomes about the video and the moment it becomes about the products, yeah. um, you know, we that's where things shift. Mm-hmm. But when when it becomes just the simplicity of just being with God, that's yeah. everything. And that's what I – that's honestly, I think when we originally started talking about even doing the podcast thing here, it was like there's obvious logistics that we want to train and do. But totally. let's talk about the heart yeah. and, the, and the why behind mm-hmm. <laughs> why we've been doing yeah. all this, you know, um, which is yeah. what's exciting. So I think, man, just being a part of that and seeing that – and how you've done that. I mean, I personally can attest for Max and brag on him for five mm. seconds. Because like, we did this, the Belonging Co. album, which is a whole other, like, we could talk yeah. for hours about how 
God was in every detail of that thing. But just, you know, even like for me, coming in, kind of having a little bit of experience in recording, not crazy amounts, but him showing me like Pro Tools and editing and being able to kind of go in and like work on some of that together. Um, yeah, dude. I was a part of that yeah. because of, of him being that extension yeah. and saying, hey, come along and, and do this thing. And I you see that in the people. Yeah. That's just part of the, the culture of our place is mm-hmm. like, like finding people and bringing them along and having everyone yeah. be a part. It's, I think it's huge and important. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, we obviously love the belonging code, but it's not like just for our listeners, it's not our intention to like, oh, belong code is everything. Yeah, we're, totally. We're like, we can really, but the important thing to grasp here is that like these are insights from a healthy, mm-hmm. healthy yes. worship team that yeah. you've been there since the beginning yeah. and like what it's like. And I've seen mm-hmm. unhealthy worship teams, you mm-hmm. know, plenty mm-hmm. of Same. them, but belonging yeah. code is a good example of a healthy worship team. I'm sure there's, there's, I could name a hundred churches that also have healthy worship teams, mm-hmm. but for yeah. this specifically, are there any other like insights you can give us, like being there from the beginning? How did you grow yeah. from like 20, yeah. 10, five people in a room to yeah. like recording this amazing album and like growing so fast and changing Nashville? Yeah. yeah. Well, it was, it's so funny because it's like, you know, that first night, I, I mean, I had no idea that this yeah. was going to happen. Um, but, you know, we we went back like, you know, a couple weeks later and we did it again and there were a couple more people there. Um, and one of the biggest things was like, it was just affecting each one of us at such a, um, in such a massive way mm-hmm. that it, it literally changed our lives. And so like one of our, our friends, Mia, I mean, she would just tell everybody, like everybody she came in contact with, like, they're like, hey, you're different. Like, what is the deal? Like what is going on mm-hmm. in your life? And she would just tell them, like, come Tuesday night, just come. Yeah. And they'd be like, well, what is it? And she's like, it's kind of like church, but just come. And yeah. they'd be like, okay. Then they, those people would come, and the same thing would happen. Like, they would mm. have an encounter with God, and they would get their lives changed. <laughs> um, and then they would do the same thing as they would just tell people. Um, mm. So it really kind of, it just started off with, you know, them asking a couple of their friends to come to everyone just like talking about it yeah. mm-hmm. um, and then other people coming and kind of the same thing happening. Yeah. Um, I will say like when we left their house and started doing it at like an actual venue, mm-hmm. um, I was really scared because I thought mm-hmm. this yeah. is this is actually the end sure. yeah. of this cool like yeah. small mm-hmm. thing that we had um, where you know everybody mm-hmm. and like, mm-hmm. you know, like Alex would be preaching and all of a sudden she just stops and like, you know, starts ministering to somebody and yeah. there's mm. 25 of you. So everybody's like, cool, this is awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, you start getting like 300 people. You can't really do that anymore. Yeah. Um, but to see it grow and to see um, some of that like stuff about serving, you know, other people mm-hmm. and like, what you know, what can I do just to help? I think people really caught on to that idea of like, I got my life changed here and I'm seeing this person walk in for the first time. Like mm. I remember what it was like when I first came the first time and God changed my life. I want to do anything I can mm-hmm. to help mm. so that that person can have that experience. Yeah, that's so good. And yeah. that's why you see people like, you know, who are who are out on the road and like have, you know, their name on big screens and stuff, but then they're like out parking cars because mm-hmm. they're like yeah. I want people's, you know, lives to get changed. And that really has just like it's really caught on. I think mm-hmm. when people encounter God, their response is like, mm-hmm. "What can I do to to help?" And that I mean, that's like Henry. Henry like knew I was a guitar player. Like I'd played with him before, but um, I didn't like volunteer on the worship team for almost a year and a half. Like before um, I was like doing that because I mean we were driving a U-Haul, <laughs> setting up church, like yeah. doing yeah. all the things. But it was just like. If I saw, you know, Henry drive the U-Haul and like he's a billion times better guitar player than I am, I'm like, okay, I've got no business like not driving the U or like not crawling underneath the stage and making sure that, you know, this this room feels good for people when they walk in and and Mm. the the atmosphere is set to where um, you know, people can encounter God. So I'd say all those things, but also really it's just like God just shows up like yeah he just you know henry and alex also honestly do such a great job of like allowing yes the holy spirit to do what he's gonna do and kind of that they they are really sensitive to that Mm -hmm. in a pretty profound way so they 
can just follow where it's going. Mm -hmm. Um, And because we've all had time really getting to know them, we trust them completely. And so, you know, the Holy Spirit just like doing things in church services and, you know, changing people's lives. That's that's the thing that um, has really like made people come back and yeah. like mm-hmm. you know it's like that's like one of my favorite things yeah. um of every single week it's my favorite thing every single week is like mm-hmm. going to church and like yep. seeing god move and like you know being in god's presence that's the thing that i think you know mm-hmm. all those other yeah. things are affected because of that that's so huge we talked yeah. about like in our in our second episode which was technically our first episode yeah we talked about um Matthew six thirty three seek first the kingdom of mm. God and His righteousness. Totally. All these things will be added unto you. And we really kind of tried to unpack that because what's the point of worship and leading mm-hmm. worship? And we wanted to kind yeah. of like just talk about the kingdom of God, the, just the presence of God being everything we want That's and the good. priority. And I think as it as it relates to you know you could hear you if you could listen to this or watch this and. And just hear a pitch for the belonging. That's and that's totally. that's not what this <laughs> we is. We just happen to go there. Yeah, it's, so so funny. it's our home. But yeah. you know, I think what's so cool is that Definitely you can did not pre- like prepare for that. <laughs> yeah, <so>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, totally. But it's it's on our lips and it's in our heart. And I think it's yeah. because it's really all about the presence of God. And no matter what church you're at, if the presence of God is what you desire most, start in the secret place. Start, yeah. you know, on your own, just mm-hmm. wanting to be in the presence of God and take that into your place of worship and just yeah. your heart's desire is to serve and just be in the presence of God together. And watch that start to shift in your own circles. Yeah, totally. And yeah. that'll mm-hmm. overtake the church and that'll overtake the place that you're at yeah. and you're serving because it doesn't have, it. Do, you know, you don't have to leave for it to be great. You know, mm-hmm. even if, if maybe people totally. are comfortable in the church or you've been around for hundreds of years, you know, it doesn't matter if the presence of God is everything you want and it's all your heart's desire, these other things will be added unto you. Mm-hmm. And God will take you from place to place and t- deeper and deeper. Yeah. And I think that that's the unique thing about this is that, again, it's not an overnight success. It's, no. it's just someone yeah, totally. who's been on years and years. If you knew Alex and Henry, it's like yeah. they've been in years and years and yeah. years of ministry. And then going into just this next step of faith for God to take him even deeper. Yeah. And and that's really the fruit of, of, of those years. And and yeah. um, w- that can happen anywhere. That can happen totally. in your circle. That can happen in your community, in your church. If it's not all about the lights, not all about yeah. the music, but really just about being in the presence of yeah. God together. Yep. And then everything else can come. And that's what's yeah. so exciting to see. And I think all of our heart, you know, is, yeah. is for everyone to be able to experience that, I think, together. Yeah. Yeah. And it's such a testament to the leadership, like especially as like as a in any, in any sort of leadership position, but specifically yeah. like a, a worship team, like totally. Um, I would say that like good musician or great musicians attract great musicians, and we talked about this on a, on a like, other musician other sure. <laughs> episode about practicing mm. your instrument, <laughs> yeah. like practice, and you know, especially as a totally. leader, like if you're not increasing in skill, how can you expect other people to do this? But that's good musicians, good. great musicians attract other great musicians, and that's such a thing with the belonging because they have so many great musicians. But not even that, like um, just a testament to how like. As a leader, even though you are a great musician, mm. you're out there driving the U-Haul and you're under mm. the stage plugging yes. in yes. cables and you're doing everything to serve your team, and that's yeah. so yes. important. And I think that the health of your team like revolves around w- that sort of thing as what the leaders are doing to cultivate sure. mm-hmm. that sort of atmosphere. And if you've been on your worship team for a while, maybe that's a good challenge. Like, what are you doing to serve other than playing music? Yeah, you know what awesome. are what are things that so you're good. doing to help the church that isn't music? And if yep. there isn't anything else. Maybe that's a challenge. Like, get yep. in there and do something else. You know, yeah. what else? Can you stay a little later and help stack chairs or just go out and greet people um, before service yep. or like things that you can do to bring people in? And another thing that you mentioned was like Mia, I could just see her like being yeah. out and inviting everyone, but go invite people to church. I mean, if, yeah. if you want. If God's radically changed your heart and the people around you in your community, then invite that to happen to other people yeah. and watch what sparks from that. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. It's simple and we can kind of be intimidated and fear can set in. But if you really have been changed by God, like let that be what attracts that in your life. Yeah. yeah. Go out and, and just see what happens. You know, yeah. like the worst thing that happens, yeah. they say no, like big deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and so I think that that's. Man, I just love that we're able to kind of unpack this a little bit. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it's like, it's like, oh, I don't feel like, you know, stacking chairs. It's like, well, duh. 
but you know, it's like, or I don't feel like doing this. Sure. Sometimes like you step out and you do it. And then you realize like, oh, I actually like really love my church. And yes. you, st- you start meeting yeah. people like that yeah. you like in other areas of like volunteering that mm-hmm. you never knew. And then you're like, yeah. oh, this guy's like really cool. Or like, you know, I can be friends with um, him or her now. And it's mm-hmm. like, sometimes it just takes like stepping out and doing it. And, yeah. but yeah, having a heart for like, you know, the, the people that are coming in and um, like, if you, if, if you're listening and like you haven't had that like encounter with God and you're like, well, I, I, I think I just like, you know, playing music. Like that's amazing. God's given you that sure in your heart. He's given you that desire to pursue music. But like, I, I would just encourage you to, to go after that, like encounter with God mm-hmm. because you can have it. Like he can, you know, mm-hmm. wherever you're at, if it's at, on your, on your own at home while you're practicing or, um, at church, like, Go after an encounter for God and let it let it change you, and it'll mm-hmm. affect yeah. everything. And that yeah. that has a lot to do with like what part of the vision of worship online is. I believe that when you impact the leaders of the mm-hmm. church, which is the worship band, like they're the leaders, yeah, they're totally. on stage, sure. people are looking. That overflows into your congregation. That's so much of our vision, and why I'm so passionate about helping worship yeah. team yeah. members and worship leaders. And and that's like Mia is a worship team member. Like mm-hmm. she's yeah. when you impact Mia and you and and yeah, you yeah. guys are going out inviting people to church. You guys are the leaders. Totally. Like and then they yeah. come to church and see y'all on stage. Like y'all yeah. are the leaders. So like when you yeah. can really like lead the leaders as mm-hmm. like a leader of the church as a worship leader when you're leading your band members who are leaders totally. whether they know it or not <laughs> yeah um that's going to overflow into the masses into the church into the congregation as the leaders of the church and something i love about that is you know obviously we hear that word a lot leaders and you know music, musicians are leaders but i heard this really cool quote um a couple of years ago actually it was when i first moved here mm. um that was if we could stop having leadership conferences and start having servant conferences <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> dang. and be like that redefines leadership totally. and i think that you know the the best leaders leaders leadership is a it's a byproduct. Mm-hmm. It's actually, it comes after servanthood. Servanthood in just saying, I just want to mm-hmm. be there to serve people and love people. Yeah. That is influential, which, you know, the byproduct of that then yeah. is leadership. And mm-hmm. I think if you strive for just leadership, it's one thing. Obviously, that's a whole other conversation. But just how are you serving? Yeah. You know, how are you loving people? How are you just putting others above yourself? And that's what yeah. we were talking about in these first few episodes, this is why I love this so much. Yeah. And I know we're talking about heart a ton yeah, yeah. in this podcast because yeah. I know yeah. like all the guitar players are itching like, what oh, pedals are you use? Oh, yeah. 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 But that's Seriously. like, you know, it's so much part of who we are. Yeah. But now that we've gotten through all yes. that, yes. All right, let's start talking I like have... some of the logistics. All right. So, so yeah, we're going to change a little a course here a little bit. And let's do Max, it. Whenever, whenever you first started coming to Worship Online, you told me yeah. the story about you and uh, you playing through Jeffrey Cundy gear yeah. <laughs> every guitar player just mouth jaw just dropped uh, that's the what? dream every like worship guitar player's dream jeffrey yes. Cundy's guitar player for jesus culture but you played through his gear can you just give oh, us a man. true confessions i played through jeffrey true Cundy's confession. gear dude story real oh fast my gosh. how was it it was euphoric it was amazing <laughs> um so they at the at the end of their set it was uh on the outcry tour they um we were out with Lauren, Jesus Culture played last, and their very last song, everyone would come up on stage and like dance, just have like a big mm-hmm. dance party um, uh, for their last song. And so Jeffrey was like, I really want to jump around and dance. Like, can you just like play like this song, you know, uh, while I just go crazy and do, dance around? And I was like, sure. And so um, like every night we would go up there and he would just like hand me his guitar and I would wear... I would wear my ears and like a spare pack, mm-hmm. but it would be his mix. And so I would, um, I would the, like the first night I got up there, I'm like, okay, I think I know how to play the song. Like yeah. I practiced it and like got up there and he like just hands me his guitar and just runs off. And I was like, look at his pedal board. And he's like, just, <laughs> just, you know, leave it how it is. And so I start playing and it's just like, this sounds incredible. <laughs> yeah. Like, give me, a, give me a second. Like the song yeah. ends and I'm like, I just want to keep playing. You still like, playing. Like, right. give, can just you give just me keep, a moment. Keep the amps on. Cold play <laughs> riffs as people are walking yeah, out. Like, totally. <laughs> I'm just like, just playing as much as possible before they kick me off stage. Oh my gosh. Dang. How do I copy and paste this right now? It was so moment. funny. And so then he was like, dude, Dude, that was awesome. Let's do it again tomorrow night. And I was like, yes, yes let's yes. do it again tomorrow night. <laughs> Consider That's, it done. 
Uh, Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Jeffrey, he's amazing, <laughs> like such a great guitar player, and like his tones that he gets are mm -hmm. incredible, like That's iconic. Awesome. Yeah. So That's awesome. Yeah. Do you think like working in a studio as like um, being an intern and then Mm -hmm. And the studio for so long has helped you like with guitar tone. Yeah, I think that's um, like it's definitely informed a lot of the way that I approach playing in a band. Because mm -hmm. um, for so so long I was in you know that type of mindset where you're you kind of step back and you you're viewing you know the song and just the sonic like message as a whole, mm -hmm. not just like guitar. Yeah. And I got to watch, you know, producers be like, hey, why don't you play something like this? Or why don't we try this amp? And yeah. you know, why don't we try this effect and see their reasoning behind it when yeah. they were creating stuff. Um so a lot of times yeah. like, you know, when I will, you know, play play live, um, you know, you can't like live you're gonna maybe play it a little bit different mm -hmm. than what you're gonna uh, is gonna be on the the album or you don't have as many guitar players or yeah. whatever and that really helped me to bring like um it helped inform like hey what does this song need to sound like like mm -hmm. maybe i'm the only guitar player like how can i play that line mm -hmm. but play it big enough to where the band sounds full and yeah. it's like oh well maybe use this delay setting and um stuff like that and it just kind of helped me yeah. like i'm i'm not just up here playing guitar there's a drummer doing something and yeah. like the thing that he's doing, what what should it make me think to mm -hmm. play, or mm -hmm. you know, keys or anything yeah. like that? So that was definitely a huge, um, huge part of like informing my yeah. approach to playing guitar with a band. Yeah, mm -hmm. for yeah, sure. That's awesome. I was yeah. wondering. Um, we were writing this down. And you mentioned this a little bit earlier too. Mm -hmm with um, being on tour mm -hmm. and hearing Jeffrey's mix on yeah. like a spare pack. But we're talking monitor mixes kind of mm -hmm. before we started. Yeah. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there listening who, you know, maybe they haven't done that a lot or they've got, you know, like an Avion system. We're talking right. about kind of the importance of, of a good mix. Mm -hmm. um, but I know for you too, and this goes back to like serving the church, you've also been on the production team. You've done a lot of the belonging. I mean, you've been there from day one. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of hard not to have jumped yeah. in some of these places. Totally. But even now, I mean, you're playing um, obviously guitar on the record. You're helping in the studio but then um, you'll run ears from time to time. Mm -hmm. And how has that kind of helped playing live um, in addition to obviously tone, um, yeah. hearing things in a mix? Um, what do you prefer? What are some insights that you might have for that? Yeah, I think for me, so on, on tour, <clears throat> you were saying uh, our guy who runs front of house was running monitors for Jesus Culture. Um, and so I kind of just asked him like, hey, can I listen to you mix Jesus Culture's monitors? Um, during their set just because you know I think it's important to always try to learn from other people that sure. are great yeah. you know yeah. and like um, just saying like you know having the attitude of like I can always learn something more mm -hmm. I can always get better um, and so every night I would just go side stage before <laughs> before I would jump up there and <laughs> play that song uh, with the heaven <laughs> guitar <laughs> bells ringing um, and I would listen to like Jeffrey's mix and Josh's mix and some of the other you know players mixes to kind of see like how do they list how do they set their mix like how mm. do they want to hear everything and um, that really I learned like a lot mm -hmm. just from like listening mm. to the way that you know he would use certain effects or um, he would have like certain things mixed on songs made me think like oh maybe I could try that mm. in my mix um, and even at church like volunteering you know, running monitors, it, it being in the like reverse role mm -hmm. has really helped me be mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, this is, you know, put, puts me in the other person's shoes yeah. of mm -hmm. like, okay, how can I communicate better to them now sure. that I've been in their position? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. and just kind of understanding, um, you know, the position that they're in. And yeah. it really, really has like helped a ton because especially in worship, like, monitors like what you're hearing is a bit is really important sure because if if the worship leader wants to go into the course again and mm -hmm. you don't really have them very loud and your guitar is like blaring in the mix like you're not going to be on the same page with them yeah. you know um and so if you're c kind of flowing and you're going from one song to the next like it it's i've found that it's really helpful um, hearing like what everybody's doing because mm. if mm. the keys are playing a certain part that I can add something to, I yeah. want to I want to know that yeah. you know I want to I want it to be like the best environment for people to like encounter God and not be distracted. Mm. Um, and sometimes like 
not playing is distracting and sometimes playing is distracting, you know? Sure. So it's yeah. like, how can I, um, what, what tools do I have to help that whole, you know, experience come about? Yeah. And if you can't hear what people are doing, then mm-hmm. it's hard to know. Yeah, absolutely. That's good, but, man. That's yeah. Good insight. Cool. Um, you want to talk about some gear? Let's do it. <laughs> I know every guitar player is like, oh, finally. Gear. The <laughs> best. Finally. Oh, yes. What it, What is actually, <clears throat> we can get into more specifics. Sorry, my computer went to sleep. Uh, mm. What is actually like your favorite piece of gear right now? Ooh. <laughs> Let's start with pedals. Favorite pedal. Okay, okay. Uh, man. And why? Yeah, totally. Favorite pedal right now. Oh, man. I'm just going to say... I'm going to say the Big Sky mm. reverb um, cuz it just it just like is inspiring every time I turn it on. Like yeah. no matter what reverb setting I go to, um, it inspires me to like play a part or to like write something yeah. or and it's cool on anything. Like it's cool on guitar, it's cool mm. on keys, it's mm. cool on vocals, like yeah. you know anything. Um, but I that one right now to me is like I think it's one of like my newer ones, mm-hmm. so I'm kind of stoked about it. But every nice. like setting on it is yeah amazing gold. What yeah, uh, that's what, awesome. What amps are you playing? Um, so the amps that I play are a Matchless DC30 and um, a Vox AC30. Nice. Um, those like they just sound really great together, and it's got big 212 speakers in it. Mm-hmm. And um, when the when classic. I go yeah when I'm when I'm out with Lauren, it's I'm the only guitar player, mm-hmm. and so um, I've worked with like her front of house guy to really try to get some amps that you know cover a lot of um, cover a lot of space. Yeah. And running stereo really helps with that, mm-hmm. so he can you know pan them um, wide left and right. Because if if I was running mono, he'd have to you know pick a mm-hmm. one spot in the mix for me to sit. Um, and so running stereo has been you know really helpful. And if you have a great like um sound guy at your church like he's your best friend like yeah. he's you know he can help you like he he's hearing what everything sounds like together mm. um from the front of house console and so ask him like hey how's everything sound like what can i do to make mm-hmm. it better and yeah um every like <laughs> every place i've ever played in the world like that's my goal is like mm. i want to be best friends with the sound guy so yeah. we can like you know, we yeah. can make it sound the best that it can. Mm. Um, but those two amps have like, I mean, I just, I love them. Yeah. So those are those are my go tos. That's great. What uh, uh, guitar are you playing? So my favorite guitar at this point is um, I just got a Fender Strat. Yeah. And it is. I you, played it. Played did it at you church. play it on any worship online tutorials yet? Yeah, I played it on a lot of them. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, but that one is like is incredible. I played it at church last night it and was just so like, good. it was really? so awesome. Nice. I've Ooh, like always better. wanted a Strat mm-hmm. and um, ju- like literally just got one and um, mm. yeah. I remember Smooth. you saying you were gonna borrow a Strat for a song. Yeah, you end up just getting one. Yep. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Perfect. Yep. It's <laughs> love how that works. It's a crazy story, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's it's, awesome. It's a it's such an amazing guitar. It's got like a maple neck, and it sounds mm. incredible. So, um, uh, yeah. So I'm like, I mean, I love my other guitars. Yeah, yeah. sure. But that one right now is just like mm. number one. It's so, <laughs> nice. it's the, it's the special. It's extremely special. So, that's awesome. when are you guys going back out? Um, so we'll we'll do a tour. Lauren's working on a new album right now. So we'll do another tour like the second half of this year. Um, we're not like really sure what the routing um, or all the bookings are going to look like. But when her album comes out, we'll do we'll do another tour, and um, I'm really excited for that. The yeah. last tour we did was like it was incredible. Really? It was so. I mean, her whole team, like all those guys, are amazing, um, and they just some of the my my best friends and amazing people so mm. thinking about like mm-hmm. doing another tour uh, later this year is like so exciting that's like up that's cool yeah nice. cool. it'll be really good all right man it's that was great, great man. max <laughs> thanks so much for sharing your thank heart thank you man. so much here. thanks for having it's been me awesome yeah. bro yeah seriously it's been it an again. honor and you're, ladies and gentlemen max corwin so you're on you instagram him. yes at uh, max.corwin at max.corwin yep. and you can also see him shredded up on worshiponline.com yes oh, yeah. worshiponline.com right. 
yes. play through some songs. And now you have a formal introduction to Max. That's right. That you didn't have before. That's right. Awesome. Who's this guy yeah. telling me how to play yeah. these songs? <laughs> totally. That's right. Now we know it's Max. <laughs> yes. Don't forget, we're giving away here in January or February. We're going to be giving away every, oh, well, for a little while. We yeah. haven't decided. We're giving yeah. away we're a few away, yeah, a bunch, annual probably. subscriptions. That is so, incredible. So yeah. get on That's and get, amazing. get it and uh, sign up at worshipunline.com slash yeah. podcast. Yeah. Go there, enter your email. It also helps us know that you came to us from the podcast so we yeah. can see you it, it's very encouraging that, to yeah. know that people are actually listening to this you know yeah and this is still brand new yeah. so any any help like reviews likes mm-hmm. you know if you can help push it along share it on yeah. instagram um get on there and do it and, and help us help spread spread the love yeah. share it so leave us awesome. a five-star review tell us uh it's because of max yes <laughs> yes <hair>. please <laughs> it's because of max. no help me that's awesome. awesome until next time next week yes we'll see you guys later thanks again max thank you